Yo, we're back talking about another college basketball week, day. Actually, it's just a day this time. I'll get to like some of them other games at another in another video. But I want to talk about two specific games today. Uh, both SEC matchups. First, Alabama versus Tennessee. And second, uh, Auburn versus LSU. First one, Alabama versus Tennessee. Obviously, uh, Kennedy Chandler and another Tennessee starter. Uh, I can't think of who he, who he is right now. Um, but... Uh, yeah, they were both out for the game, and obviously I still can't see Kennedy Chandler play. I still haven't seen Kennedy Chandler play, um, like, in a full game. I've seen highlights, obviously, and everyone looks good in highlights, so I, I can't judge off of that. But um, every full game I've watched of him, he's been slightly underwhelming. And, you know, I'm waiting for him to play uh, at the uh, level that everyone talks about him at. Um, they always talk about, you know, he had 27 against Colorado. Well, guess what? Colorado, uh, it's isn't last year, right? They don't have McKinley Wright the fourth, so it's not the same Colorado team. And, you know, they played an Alabama team who isn't consistent at all. And, I mean, that, I think that was the title of our last video. Our last video. My last video was like, can Alabama be consistent? And the answer is no, because they they, they only beat uh, a Tennessee team that's investing two starters in their alleged best player and only beat that team by like five. Now, what happened in that game that was big was Zakai, Zeng Zakai Zegler. I, I just didn't know how to say his name the first time. But uh, Zakai, uh, you know, he went to Immaculate here in Jersey. Uh, and, you know, he played a lot, even though the Nationals would make you think he's from New York. Because, you know, they just don't like Jersey basketball. They just don't respect us. I don't know why. I don't know what we did to be disrespected by, by, the, by the national media, right? But, like, it's, it's, it's really disrespectful. That every time, you know, he just has a New York toughness about him. No, no, man. He has a New Jersey toughness because he's from New Jersey. That's where he's from. So, you know, um, that's just beside the point. But he played well. You know, he, he uh, started, obviously, and he provided some impactful minutes for Tennessee. He's a really good defender despite being 5'9". Uh, he shot the ball with confidence even though he didn't make a lot of shots. Um, but he was definitely a spark club plug for Tennessee on the defensive end, and he helped him jump out to an early lead. But... The skill set of Alabama, the depth. Noah Gurley. Noah Gurley, he went off. He had 20 points, 10 boards. And, you know, that's, that's the, one of their, ben, their uh, bench big men. You know, that's not one of their um, starters, not Betty Ako or uh, Gary or any of them. It's one of their depth forwards, and he came in. He played really well. JD was, was I don't want to say really bad, but he was really bad. He had eight turnovers. He had, like, I think... Four points, five points. He hit like he was one for three in the field. Uh, but he's a freshman, obviously. You know, he's a five star. He's still young, and he's coming off the bench for a reason. Cause you got two guards that are potential All SEC guards, um, in JQ and Shackelford. Um, and obviously they both played pretty well. Shackelford not as much. He's been kind of inefficient recently. And you know he'll bounce back from that. We know he's a good shooter, and you know he'll get out of that inconsistency. Uh, that he's in right now, or slump, whatever you want to call it. And him and JQ, they don't have to rely on each other when one is struggling. And, you know, that's what they did in this game. You know, Shackelford was 5 of 17, 2 of 10 from 3. And JQ comes in, I'm going to be 7 for, for 13. I was 1 for 7 from 3, but I'm also going to give you 4 assists, 3 boards. You know, so, like, just that depth, giving 18 points for JQ in 29 minutes, that's efficiency. And, you know, that's showing why he's probably uh, going to be in the conversation for SEC Player of the Year. Now, I know they want to talk about Jabari Smith. I'm about to get to him real quick. But that, like, a big part of Alabama runs through their guards, meaning Davidson, JQ, and Shackelford. Those three are it's going to be essential to win the games down the stretch. Um, now, let's talk about Auburn versus LSU. LSU, obviously, undefeated 12-0 coming into the game. Auburn was 11-1 with the one loss being in the Atlantis tournament. I want to say it was to UConn and triple overtime? Double overtime? It was in some amount of overtimes, and, you know, that was obviously a really good game. Uh, Adamus Nago went off, and, well, he plays for UConn. And, you know, Jabari Smith, this was one of my first times being able to see him, and, yeah, he's um, he's like that. He he, he, he gets right to, he's just an efficient scorer. He can put, he can uh, score off the dribble. He has a solid pull-up game. He's like 6'10". He's 2'10". He needs to, you know, get in the weight room, but I know Auburn don't believe in that. A coaches and strength staff, they, they, they might not even have one. Because I know J.C. Thor came in about 195, um, coming in from high school, and he left about 185. Now he's on the Hornets. He's 6'10", right? Um, so I think he lost weight in his time at Auburn. I don't think 
he knew where the weight room was. Um, so hopefully they can fix that for Jabari Smith because if he can gain some weight, he can get to like 220, 225. That's not even a lot to ask. Like he should be around like 235 because he's 6'10". And with his skill set, you could use your body to post up in the NBA. But that's not the point. But, um, yeah, he's really skilled. Uh, he, can shoot the, he can shoot the three well. He can shoot the mid-range well. Um, finish at the rim. And, you know, he just gets these buckets. You <laughs> feel me? And that's what he does. And he does it at a really high clip. And Auburn's guards are really, yeah, I don't want to use the word gritty, uh, feisty. Like, they, 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 they are really pesty in the defensive backcourt. And that's what led to Auburn getting out to, like, I think it was like an 18 0 run to start the game. Uh, and LSU just flustered. They missed their first 13 shots, uh, with like 0 for 9 from 3 to start the game. And they were just getting flooded. And, like, against a team like Auburn that has that much depth and that much, like, e that many effort players. Uh, Walker Kessler, he was he was above average at US, I mean, UNC last year. Wasn't anything crazy. Went to Auburn. Now he's the nation's, like, block leader, I think, or second. And he's averaging the most blocks per minute out of anyone in the country. And he's been really efficient. He had 11 blocks in that game. He had a triple double with blocks. He had eleven block. Or I think they edited it to ten blocks, ten boards, and fifteen points or whatever he had. He had a really good game, and he showed why you know he's being he's becoming one of the best defensive bigs in the country. And there's a lot of guys that are um, not going into the paint against Auburn as much because of that length you have in the paint with Smith and Kessler. So you have to you know rely on your outside shot, which is what LSU tried to do early. And obviously, it's not falling, but that's not just because of LSU. Now, there were some missed open looks because they're flustered, but a lot of it is Auburn's backcourt just being pesty and making them take tough shots. And Auburn's one of the best defensive teams in the country. i say they are the best defensive team in the SEC, um, even though Tennessee was a, a lead on the defensive end against Alabama, obviously holding their best player to 5 for 17 shooting or their highest score to 5 for 17 shooting in Shackleford. And, yeah, I think that uh, the SEC is really deep this year. And I still think Alabama's going to win the SEC, but Auburn is definitely a really good team that's going to come close. And LSU is not bad just because of that one game where they got smoked. Uh, I just think LSU needs to establish an offensive identity because they've been down by 10 points in, like, 8 of their 12 wins so far. So they might want to do something about that at some point.